Uh, we're going to do Von Sloop and we're going to do a Kimura variation today. So, uh, but we're going to do it off the guillotine defense. So, first things first, let's have your partner, uh, let's go with close guard guillotine. So, uh, your partner's going to put close guard on you. He's going to put me in defense. So, um, actually, I think the like, close guard is an inferior guillotine because of, it's not, he can't really, like, really stretch me and he can't really compress me. So, being caught in the guillotine and close guard is, I think the guy has to be really, really good at guillotines to finish it. Um, so, if you do right, you know, this, this should be a, a good help to you. That being said, one of the fundamental mistakes of guillotines, it's almost always just putting your head in the wrong position. Um, unless he's baited you into a guillotine, um, usually it's you putting your head in the wrong position. For example, like you're doing a double leg, with your head down too low, or you come up and you drive up in the turtle the position with your head down too low. But um, let's work from here today. So Adam's gonna wrap up the guillotine, and we're gonna start from here. So the first thing is, is that, Adam's in like the optimal position here because my hand is um, isn't inside the guillotine. So in other words, he doesn't have this arm wrapped as part of the guillotine. But that is also like a good advantage for me because I'm going to have this hand free. Okay. So he's got good position here like this, and he's going to uh, obviously start to squeeze and extend. And he's gonna that, okay. So the first thing we're going to do with guillotine defense is, is really, really obvious, but often forgotten. I need to protect my neck, okay? So I'm going to use my hand on the same side, and I'm going to get a little bit of purchase here. Now the good thing about the guillotine is, if you're trying, when you're trying to defend or escape it, is that because uh, he, it's a really kind of a hand dominant choke, like he's like really just choking me with his hand, okay, he's using the rest of his body for assistance, but if you think about the rear naked choke, it's the whole arm. So he can use the power of his whole arm plus the extension. Because he's kind of like hand dominant, if I catch his hand here, I can actually stave off the guillotine pretty effectively. Um, if it's deep, obviously, I may just still need to tap. But if I can get my fingers in and just work it towards his hand, not towards his wrist, because when I go towards his wrist, it doesn't really help me. You can see it's pretty nasty. So I'm going to try and focus and get towards his fingers and his hands and just try and make as much of a, an impact on the, on the choke as I possibly can. So what I'm always trying to do when I go inside I'm always trying to pull his thumb. Okay, I'm trying to pull his thumb there, so I'm trying to actually twist his hands. So I just put my hand in there, and hoping that uh, he doesn't have a good squeeze, I'm actually going to try and bend his hand. So when I'm going inside, I'm going to turn like this. Okay, that's not illegal. I'm going over the whole hand. Right, just going over the thumb joint. So when he's here, I get my hand in, I begin to turn. This is the side he wants me on. Okay, so he wants my head down low here. So if I start to just like twist a little bit this way, already when Adam goes to try and finish the squeeze, it's a little bit more difficult for him. When my, his elbow is down on the mat here, that's when he can start to compress my head. And even with the hand in there, that's pretty nasty. So I'm going to open my leg here a little bit. And when Adam goes to squeeze now, the combination of my hand, plus the, you can even hear I'm, I'm talking pretty comfortably, uh, plus the, the little angle change is going to make a big difference, okay? Can you see that my elbow goes very, very close here? Like this to his leg and I'm actually gonna meet my elbow to my own thigh here the reason being I don't want Adam getting any fancy ideas about opening his guard and making life more difficult for me like by putting in like a butterfly hook and starting to sweep me or move me so I'm gonna keep this here I'm actually gonna seal him in the closed guard I actually want that for now for this position just to defend the choke I'm always trying to tuck my chin so I'm gonna continue to work to tuck my chin the whole time the more I can tuck, the better it's going to be. Okay? For today's escape, this one we're going to do, I'm going to wrap his head. I'm actually going to come up nice and high, and I'm going to try and get my fingers to his armpit. Okay? Here. So I'm going to try and actually get my hand all the way through. So I'm not just going to like, put my hand here and be happy with that. I'm going to try and wrap his head here. Now, there's a couple of things going on. The first thing is, is that as soon as I start to do that, I start to wrap up his head like this, I kind of take his posture away a little bit. So this leg is already driving him this way, and now my shoulder is driving his head that way. So I'm like twisting his spine ever so slightly, which means once again, when he goes to try and squeeze, he's got a little bit more resistance, okay, to deal with. And I'm always just trying to creep those fingers up, trying to tickle him in the armpit on the other side, okay? Everybody says all the time, hey, what if you actually tickle him? And that's not a realistic scenario, but what I would say is, is if he gets tickled and you're intentionally trying to tickle him, it's not a fight you're in. It's a different type of social situation and probably not best suited for the jiu-jitsu mat. So 
just be wary of that. So from here, when I'm putting in here, when I put my hands into the armpit, I'm like anchoring. Do you know what I mean? So if I put my hand here like this, and no matter how sort of deep I get my arm, as soon as he starts to move, that hand will slip away. So I'm going to try and get my fingers and kind of anchor them in his, in, in his armpit. Okay. Now I'm going to drop my shoulder down on his neck here. I'm going to start to bring myself up higher, bring my hips up higher. And from here, Adam can choose. Already I can feel Adam trying to take the squeeze away because you can see him lifting his hips, can you? Because in a few seconds he might even have to tap because I'm driving down directly down on his neck. And there's the tap there, okay? How often is the submission there? Very rarely. Usually what he's going to have to do is try and open his legs and try and create and take the pressure away. So when I go here, he opens his legs. Good. That's when I'm going to begin to move across him and start to pass his guard. I'm going to keep the shoulder pressure the whole time. He's at the top in here again, sir. I'll take the little, little release off. And from here, I guarantee you he wants to release this, the neck now. Okay? But from here, let's just go with the shoulder pressure. And I'm going to deal with what we do, how to pass the legs in a sec. So let's just go with the shoulder pressure for now and start to work our way around. Okay? Is that fair enough? So, a little detail on that. So, you grab the guillotine. Number one, protect your neck. Okay? Number two, I'm going to lift, join your knee to your elbow, right here, seal him in the clothes guard. Always trying to tuck my chin in and manipulate his wrist at the same time. Deep grip, get to his pit, up to two feet now, drop your shoulder directly down on him and start to walk away from the guillotine. Happy days if we pass straight away. I'm going to do a little detail on how to do that in a sec. Okay. Go through the steps again. One, your neck, number one. Tuck in your chin, always trying to burrow in. Two, up, elbow to knee, seal him in the clothes guard. Three, catch around his, to his pit, up to top, and start to walk away from the guillotine. And he's gonna feel that he's gonna wanna release the, the legs and start to come down. Make sense? Let's give it a try. Two to one. Uh, if, yeah. So I'm going to do, um, just gonna come back in again. Do the same thing. Um, we're just going to have a look a little bit more like with uh, the position and how, how and why it works. Right? Because a lot of times I think with people, positions like this, people think that you're just grabbing the hand and pulling the the neck away or whatever it is, or just like driving down with the shoulder. But actually what I'm doing, when I'm, if, you, if you watch, is I'm trying to like, like compress him like this as well. So I'm not just pushing downwards. So when I hook under here like this, what I'm actually gonna do is like pull his body around this way with him. Right, so I'm gonna pull him into my shoulder. That's one thing. I'm also gonna pull him into his own knees. So as I'm walking around, this is what I want him to look like. So obviously he's gonna have a lot of trouble expressing any strength through the choke, which is the point of the escape, okay? I don't want him to be able to express his strength. Does that make sense to everybody? Right, so how do you stop people from expressing their strength? Attack the spine. spine. Alright, every time. So the old adage, have you heard this one about 150 times before? Do a pull-up, cock your head to the side, try to do a pull-up. It doesn't work, right? So just try to get, get him, like, take him out of position. And now, like I say, we were talking about Alvin St. Pruder, it's a couple of people, like, but, right, it's almost like his attack becomes your attack. So when he wraps in here like this, Again, focus on the, on the details here of, of like trying to like make sure that he can't connect his hands or can't connect his hands really effectively or put any squeeze on your neck. So always working on this, always trying to tuck your chin. And the more you can get that, the better. So even if, um, uh, even if like you, you can't like get your neck completely free, as long as you, he's not getting like the maximum squeeze on your neck, you could survive this, this guillotine in time to escape. So up, connect your knee your elbow, connect your fingers to his pit, up you come to both feet. Now you're going to pull in with, I'm pulling in with my left arm here as I bring his knee towards his chest and this is going to cause him to open his guard. Now what I don't want to do is do like a hip switch here because that's going to give him back what he wants. Instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a giant donkey kick upwards, stepping here. When I feel his guard open, you'll feel it, I'm going to donkey kick. Donkey kick, but I'm going to keep my hips pretty much flat, so I'm not going to twist my hips. 
So I twist my hips, I might lose my balance, and I might take the pressure off his neck. Let's have a look at that from the rear side. And in. Protect the choke. Seal the knee to your elbow. Start walking, walking, walking. There's the guard open. Straight leg. Straight leg. Feel him a little bit choky. <laughs> Sorry, it kind of took the pressure off. Does that make sense, everybody now? When you come into the side control position and when you finish, we're actually going to keep his hand here. Keep holding his hand and stay on your toes. Okay, we're going to finish the bomb flute in a different way when we come around, okay? All good? Let's go. Two, two. So his legs are going to be up really high if you're square on. So if you're facing onto him, he can still keep his legs up high. When I'm going around the corner, he, he's going to roll to his side, which means one of his legs is nearly going to be on the mat. So if you actually just do it this way. So watch this leg. So right now we're square. So even when he opens up the guard, his leg is still pretty high. I'm not going to come out of that. So when I walk around, see the leg starts to drop. And actually, like in some no posture passes, you won't even have to kick your leg sometimes. The guy will just flatten out. So make sure you're not, make sure you're not like, just trying to jump out of the guns again. Okay, bring them all the way around the corner, compress them, bring them in, and their legs can't follow. That's the idea, yeah? Let's go try it again. Three to one. Escape is the leg getting your legs free. And I'd say on maybe like half the occasions I do this escape, this is, this is successful occasions I do the escape, not counting the times I have to stop <laughs> when the guy gets the guillotine. Because um, remember, this is submission, so like it is. It is something you're going to have to tap from from time to time. But I'd say on half of the successes, it's actually the guy letting go before I pass. Because he goes, uh oh, I'm in trouble, I'm going to let go. So if you let go of the guillotine, happy days. You just escape the guillotine. So don't worry about don't pass the guard. But if he still has this and he still keeps the, the head wrap on, even if the guillotine is let go, I'm actually going to kind of keep his arm where it is because it's a bad position without a guillotine. So once he doesn't have that guillotine and I have that good cross face on here like this, He's going to have a lot of, lot of issues. Um, I'm going to go through like the bomb through now. So, uh, same position. I think we spoke about this a little bit before in like one of the top side control classes about where I target my shoulder. And I think it's really important because when we go here and against his face, life is very difficult for him and it's not very nice. And it, it's really successful at getting past the gap. But if we want to go to the bomb through, I'm actually going to target here. Now, is my shoulder actually going to go there? No. But that's where I want to think about putting my shoulder. Down on his sternum, not up on his neck. Okay? And definitely not on his jaw. So when I actually wrap this now, I'm going to think about putting my shoulder here. Look. See where it is? And that means even if Adam tucks his chin, when I go to attack it, his chin's going to lift. Okay? Whereas if I go too high and he tucks his chin, he's going to take all of that on his jawbone. Which won't be very nice for him, but he's also not going to attack. Okay? Um, make sense? So it's not a submission threat. It's just pain. So... Wrap up the guillotine again. Let's go all the way through to the finish. So, so you can see that where my shoulder is hitting here is his chest. So when I lift, it becomes his neck. So it slides down to become his neck. If I'd gone any higher, it might slide up onto his head. I walk, walk, walk. I keep walking from here. I'm going to get the chance to step through. But that's my wrap. Uh, if you catch in the half guard, guys, again, I'm pretty happy. I'm not like disgusted. So in other words, if I only get one foot out and he ends up like catching the half guard here, I can still use this position. Now let's just assume we're going to go from here. Okay. So I still need to worry about uh, my neck. Why? Because even if he's just like grabbing his hands and squeezing, he can use it a lot to like upset my balance and like try and roll me over and move me around. It's not very skilled. It's not very like, technical. It can be a problem. It can be a problem in your neck as well, just the pain in your neck. Some people are really, really strong and you don't want to just give them a free squeeze no matter, even if it's in a bad position. Okay, because a lot of times we think about, oh, that's, you know, squeezing from bottom side control is like a bullshit technique. So it's still dangerous. It's still not good to get your head squeezed. So don't, like, you should never allow anybody a free, a free grip of your head. And you should punish them for it, but it shouldn't be like free. The other thing is, we always say, there's a freak in every gym. Um, we got a couple of freaks here who do things that should be wrong, but work. So, you know, 
it's really well if you, you go, that's, that, uh, it's really irritating that that works. It works, it works, it works for them, it wouldn't work for anybody else. And there's a lot of people who can finish the guillotine from bottom side control out there. Not very many, but they are out there and they will tap you from there. Or they'll regain position to tap you from there. Right? So I'm going to go on the attack. I'm not going to be happy that I passed the guard. I'm going to go on the attack of his neck and I'm going to keep protecting my neck. Right? So from here, I pass. I'm going to catch his hand here. I'm going to show you how to do this choke now without connecting your hands. Okay? It's kind of traditional, kind of uh, von flu. If it is traditional, it's only a few years old, but it's to connect your hands and squeeze and make him tap here. But if I dis disconnect from his, his neck, he, he, I still feel like he's dangerous with the choke. When I disconnect my hands from him, maybe he's able to regain his guard, get his leg back in, and I may have to tap. I may have to go and escape again. I just did that. I don't want to bother with it in the second time. So what I'm going to do, keep my hand here. To stop him regaining my guard now, I'm going to re regain his guard. I'm going to flatten my elbow onto his hip on the near side. You can see it over here. And that means it's just a little bit of like a block when he tries to re re regain his guard that my elbow can come back. And I'm going to use my knee against his knee or against his hip, depending on where I need to use it, to stop him regaining as well. I'm going to get up to my toes, put my shoulder into his sternum, and then I'm going to change my angle. So you're going to watch my hips tilt towards the bottom flu side. Okay? Again, this becomes my other hand. This grip is the other grip, right? So you need to have a good armpit grip here, right? So keep it here, block with your elbow, pull, drive this way. Don't put your shoulder on his jaw, he'll survive that. Put your shoulder on his sternum, come up on both toes. Angle. You may need to like chase him around the mat a little bit with this. That's why we're gonna stick onto him. We're gonna latch onto him and let him carry our weight as well. Remember, every time your opponent does anything, he's denying himself a little bit more oxygen. He has to breathe a little harder. He has to move around a little bit more. So from here, Adam starts to move. He's gonna latch onto him. I've got him. Good to go. This, when, you, when you're doing this one, right, um, Family of chokes, and most blood chokes are like this a little bit anyway. It's just like about constant pressure instead of like how hard you squeeze. So uh, if you do the guillotine, for example, and you go on the track here, oh, you catch it like that, you get that reaction tap. You won't get a reaction tap out of this. So you won't get them to go like, uh, you know, they, they always say tap with both hands. You won't get that. So what you're gonna have to do is cook them slowly. So it's about confidence knowing that you have it on and just staying there then. So for me, once I get it here and I feel that softness on his neck, I'm just gonna stay. Stay, 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 stay. And I don't care if it takes 30 seconds to do it, right? Same thing with like the north-south choke as well, it's pretty much the same. When you go to do it uh, and you feel that and you know you have it, fidgeting is the worst thing you can do. And what I mean by fidgeting is like adjusting. I'm not meaning to adjust from time to time, but if you develop confidence in the choke, once you start to kind of like, like lift off, every one of those is a breather for him. And every one of them is like, is artery getting a break. And if I kind of like <clears throat> trying to maneuver and shift around, there's also a chance he's gonna tuck that chin here and get himself inside. So if you do it right and you aim for here, when you keep the pressure down, even if he keeps his chin tucked, this is still gonna be down, body weight, body weight, body weight, body weight, body weight, body weight. You can't resist that for long. So it's just gonna be like about staying in position, latching onto him. Use the term latching on, once I latch on, and stay stuck to him, you know what I mean? Like if you have to do naked. Are we happy enough? Any questions before we? Uh, is, is, he, is, he, is, he, is, is there any question for anyone other than him? <laughs> 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 uh, so when he is getting choked, is he close guard and he's choking his fist like this and he's like covering his fingers, if he can't get him in to protect your neck, is there a way to Yeah, I got as low on the arm as possible. I know what you mean, like he's one of those guys, he does yeah. that for even those guys. Hard, like, like it's nothing's easy about it, I suppose. Close guard. Yeah, like he is in a submission after all. Do you know the grip I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, and there's nothing here and there's no space. You're still gonna do the same thing, but if I need to take the forearm, that's what I'll do then. It could be best optimal, get the fingers or get the thumb, instead to crank the thumb. But suboptimal is as low on the arm as I can get. 
and anything really will give you a little bit of a break. And remember, look, with this as well, you're just trying to survive for long enough to execute your escape. This is like about the first survival. So if you can survive long enough to get into the position. So this is not the escape. This is just giving you a little bit of a, a straw, full of, straw full of air, you know? Like, make sense? Yeah. And that's... Nice. Well, let's get to work then. So uh, let's grab a partner and... Uh,